Seville Silver inside of the Genesis GV70 is a stunning color choice. The metallic paint flick just adds a touch of class to an already luxurious vehicle. You're going to find the Genesis GV70 available with either a gas engine or as an available electric. And this thing is the electric and it is an absolute blast. I was first introduced to the Genesis lineup years ago. One of my buddies bought a first generation Hyundai Genesis before Hyundai decided to split up the Hyundai versus Genesis lineup. But it has come a long way and this is an absolutely beautiful ride. The GV70 has seating for up to five people and an incredible amount of technology inside and out. You're only gonna find the GV70 all wheel drive. So it doesn't matter if you're in the gas version or the electric version, that's the only drivetrain option. There are a series of different wheel choices that are available. 19 inch is going to be the entry level wheel in the gas version going up to 21 inch, but inside of the electrified version, you're only looking at 20 inch wheels. And I gotta say the style there looks great. And even the cap in the middle, it's almost like a carbon fiber dip with the Genesis logo in the very middle. That looks very sharp. You're gonna find a few different style front ends inside of the GV70, depending on if you're looking at the gas or the electric version. But I gotta say the electric version with its diamond cutout grill, I think looks fantastic. Charging up the Genesis GV70, just along the side there, there's a little G you're gonna push in order to reveal the level one and the level two charge support. So it's got, well, I guess even level three, so supercharging is available there as well. It's funny, so I don't have a level to charger or like charge station at home. And this is a press vehicle for me. And it's pretty, it's a pretty tedious process when you're only level one charging. Like you're looking zero to 100% in about 70 plus hours. Level two charging is a little bit more realistic depending on the voltage, you're looking at about seven hours. And then DC supercharging 10 to 80%, you're at about 18 minutes, which is pretty respectable at the same time. Like the charging capabilities in this thing is great. Overall range, 383 kilometers in ideal conditions. That's obviously gonna be cut down a little bit if you're using the available boost mode, which is an amazing amount of fun. Or in winter time, that's gonna get cut down by about 20 to 30-ish percent, especially when you get into those minus 20, minus 30 days. This thing does have the forward sensing system, the front facing camera, side mounted cameras for an incredible 360 view. And I really appreciate how Genesis does their 360 camera. It looks amazing. The technology that you get is going to be trim level specific, but since I'm in Canada, the Genesis Electric, the GV70, only comes in the prestige trim level. There's an advanced trim down in the States that doesn't have quite as many features, but it's still fairly feature loaded at the same time. Underneath the hood of the GV70, you've got three different powertrains that are available. So it's either going to be a 2.5 liter engine, a 2.5 turbo, there's a 3.5 turbo, or in the electric, it's a 77.4 kilowatt hour battery instead. And power wise inside of this thing, 429 horsepower and 516 pound feet of torque. It's amazing. And like this thing does absolutely go. I love it. The 3.5 liter inside of the gas version is so pretty solid at the same time. So the gas engines are mated with an eight speed automatic transmission. And then you've obviously got the electric here, 77.4 kilowatt hour battery. It does have 383 kilometer range or 238 miles, which is very respectable. And you can see there, this thing does have a tiny little frunk with some multi-tiered storage, but it doesn't go too deep just because of the way that this thing is designed underneath. When you look at the warranty inside of the Genesis world, you're looking at five year, 100,000 kilometers or 60,000 mile for your basic. And then the powertrain is the exact same. So five year, 100,000 kilometers with the electric hybrid components getting covered for a little bit of a longer period of time. So the warranty is good. And as always, you've always got the option of increasing the warranty at time of purchase if you need a little bit more peace of mind. The rear end styling of the GV70 is fantastic. The lamps look great. The badges touch a class there. You're going to find the reverse sensing system inside of this thing. And whether you're in the gas engine or the electric, this thing can pull up to 3,500 pounds. So it's got towing up to 3,500 pounds when you have a trailer that's got brakes. So you're less than half of that if you're pulling just a regular trailer. But if you had like a bike rack carrier, things like that, you're okay. 
Getting into the trunk of this thing can be done a few different ways. So just to the left hand side of the steering wheel, there's a button that you can push in order to be able to open it up. You can utilize the key fob. There's even the smart lift gate feature where you have to get about 10 to 15 feet away from the car for at least 10 to 15 seconds. And as you walk up to the back end, it'll automatically open it up for you as well. Smart lift gate feature is amazing. And then I was trying to figure out where the button was in order to actually open this thing up for the rear end without using the key fob. Right on the wiper, there's a tiny little button there and you wouldn't think to look there for the button, but it's there. So you're just gonna push. <laughs> in order for this thing to raise up. I'm not gonna lie though, that smart lift gate feature, I probably love the most, but actually being able to open it up from the back is amazing. And off to the left hand side, you're just looking at a release for the second row seats. Along the right side, same release, but then there's also a plug along the back there too. So you can use this thing essentially as like a big battery on the go. So if you're camping, you can plug in a laptop, other electronics and things like that. It'll drain the battery out of this, but it'll also let you power things up on the go. So if you're into more glamping than anything, you've got that flexibility. This is just the regular carpeted liner that you're gonna find inside the vehicle. But popping it up, you do have the tire mobility kit. You've got the user manual there. And then on top of that, there's also the charge cable. Level one charge support. I did mention in the front end, I don't have a home charging station set up. So for me to level one charge takes like 70 plus hours. It's absolutely ridiculous. But if you're only driving your car 10, 20, 30 kilometers a day, you're probably gonna be okay just plugging in level one. But one nice thing about being a Genesis owner, like this thing only had the tire mobility kit. So if you ever pop a tire, puncture a tire, if your battery dies, you need lockout services and things like that, you do have Genesis roadside assistance. And that's the same as the powertrain warranty. So a five-year coverage there with unlimited miles. So he said, if you need fuel delivery, winching services, towing services, things like that, it is available for you as an owner. This thing has the available cargo shade. They're going to find, you can always do something aftermarket if you really wanted to. And then releasing the second row seats is straightforward. So doing it from the trunk area, there's a release for you to drop down the second row seats on the driver passenger side. And it's a 60, 40 bench. So 60 on the driver, 40 on the passenger. And the cargo measurements that you're looking at right now are going from right where the lift gate would close to just in behind the armrest between the driver passenger seat. So if the seats forwards backwards a little bit more, you'd be plus or minus a few extra inches, just depending on how far forward or backwards those seats are. But still for a vehicle this size, it's a pretty solid amount of cargo space. Now there's one thing about the second row seats and that's when you go to release, the second row seat is actually fully locked down. So it's not that you can just easily pull it up. You can, you gotta release the seat first though. So there's a little lever just to the side of the second row seat. You're gonna pull that in order to lift the seat up. And then to fold down the second row seat from the inside, there's a lever along the side. Same idea, push to drop it down. But like I said, once this thing is down, it's locked down into place, which benefit downside, like if you're doing things one-handed, it's a bit of a pain to lift it up, but not impossible at the same time. Pricing for the G70 is all over the place. And since this is the electrified version, in Canada, there's only the prestige version, which is the highest available trim. It also means it's a little bit pricier. So starting at around 80,000 Canadian for this vehicle, which unfortunately puts it a little bit above the allowable government rebate. So you're not looking at that 5K rebate inside of this vehicle. The side view mirrors in the GV70 feature turn signals. It's got the blind spot monitoring system, they're heated and they're auto dimming. So if somebody's in behind you flashing their high beams, it's automatically gonna dim it for you as well, which is great. But I love it. The outside here, the handle, nice chrome. There's a button on the outside there as well. So you can push there in order to be able to lock or unlock the doors. Hopping inside, look at that. Absolutely beautiful. But let's take a peek along the outside here first. So you've got a little speaker, all over the place. So this is a 15 speaker Lexicon audio system. There's seat memory there as well, but it's tied to more than just the seat. It's tied to the side view mirrors, the steering wheel, the driver's seat, and the head up display. So you can set this up for unique profiles. You've got all of your basic side view mirror controls with a button for your power folding side views, 
unlock lock buttons, window controls, and kill off power to the rear, rear windows, and lock up the rear doors. There's also a little storage area down there. But you've got this beautiful Genesis scuff plate as well. And this thing has a multi-adjustable seat. So the seat is going to depend on the trim level of the vehicle that you're in. Uh, you can adjust the leg cushions independently, move the seat forwards, backwards, up and down. You've also got the option of adjusting your backrest. And then there's also multi-way lumbar support there as well. It is amazing. And there is this little button for a little ergo motion or massage chair seat. And the massage, a few options. You can do it just for the cushion there along the back. So for hip focus and things like that, it is amazing. There's a switch along the top there for dimming. So you can increase, decrease the brightness of the cluster screen, brake control, traction control, open and close the lift gate, and then the electronic parking brake. Your hood release is down low. And this thing also has a power steering wheel. So power telescoping with memory. Ooh, ah. Let's start this bad boy up. Look at this. Oh, I love that. Love that startup. Oh, that looks good. The steering wheel inside of this thing is beautiful. The interior all around, quilted Napa seats. These things are beautiful. And just like the overall seat comfort as well is really, really good inside this vehicle. Oh, I love it. It's really good. And the seat has so many amazing functionalities as well. So there's an option inside of the infotainment system where the seat can hug you a little bit tighter if you're going a little bit faster. And it also has the option of learning your body. So it can automatically adjust the seat based off of you. It's actually pretty wild. And like overall space inside of this thing, hold on. So the seat, yeah, the seat's as far down now as it's gonna go. And up overhead with me fully upright, I'm what, four-ish, four and a half, half inches of head space. And I'm six foot tall six feet tall. So if you're six, four, six, five, you'll probably comfortably be able to sit inside this vehicle. That's really nice. Yeah. The seat is super comfortable. Love that. So good. But so the steering wheel inside of this thing is fantastic. Heated steering wheel with a button right there. There are a series of different buttons here as well. So there's a voice command prompt for you to change songs, radio stations, navigate using your voice. And then you can also have it double as a hot button press to activate your Google or your Siri assistant if you're hooked up over Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. We've got a series of different buttons here as well to navigate through the cluster screen and then your smart cruise control. But if you actually wanna know how to use smart cruise or even navigate through the, the steering wheel buttons or the cluster, you'll find a walkthrough down below. And the other big one is this little boost mode. Using the boost mode inside of the GV70 electric is insane. So all you're gonna do is hit the little boost button on the very bottom of the steering wheel and you've got your boost ready. You've got 10 seconds to use the boost mode after you start going, but we're gonna do a little zero to 100 kilometers an hour, so 60 miles in three, two, one, let's do it. <laughs> okay, and I'm at 100 right now. <laughs> That's so good. It's so incredibly good. <laughs> and you just get that feeling in your gut. And it just like punches and launches you forward. It is such an amazing feeling. It's also got paddle shifters. So inside of the gas version of the vehicle, those are going to be traditional paddles. So you'll have your minus on the right side. No, plus on the right side, minus on the left. Either way, but you're going to have paddle shifters there. So the benefit there is that you can essentially launch yourself nicely. But if you want to walk through on how paddle shifters actually work, you'll find it down in the description of this video. For the EV world, the paddles are slightly different. And you see there along the outside of the cluster. So that's going to be different levels. So you've got four technically unique levels there. So level zero essentially is going to be next to no resistance. So you take your foot off the accelerator and the car won't really slow down. More of an internal combustion feel. But if you plus out, you unlock I pedal. So that's one pedal drive. And that essentially means you take your foot off the accelerator and you slow down very, very rapidly. And then there are a few other great features. Like one thing that unfortunately, like the, the video just can't capture is this thing also has a fully like digital 3D display and like the 3D cluster. Yeah, you can't really tell it from the video, but there with the 3D cluster enabled, there is a great amount of depth that's actually shown inside of this thing. It is really neat. 
And then as you're driving, these things are going to highlight with highway drive assist. When you're on the highway, it'll show you vehicles along the outside that are driving next to you. If you use your turn signal while you're driving, I mean, even that, the blind spot view monitor right in the cluster. But when you're on the highway and you're in the auto cruise mode or even outside of it, you could push the turn stock left or right and it's going to check using the side view mirrors to make sure you're clear and then it can automatically change lanes for you. It is a brilliant, brilliant system. If somebody's kind of speeding up, it'll give you a little warning side. There's haptic feedback on the steering wheel. So if you get any sort of warnings, you'll get a little bit of a steering wheel shake almost as if your alignment's out of whack, but it's just the steering wheel vibrating as a safety setting, which you can turn off inside of the infotainment. And like the infotainment system in and of itself is incredible. You can see there that it's flipping around and that's because I'm using this amazing little trackpad. And rather than having to reach up to touch everything, you can use this pad in order to navigate through the infotainment system. It is really cool but you've got your basic battery information, so electric vehicle. You can also set departure times to precondition your cabin. You can schedule certain charging times, schedule climate, so precondition everything. It's honestly an amazing system. And you can see here, so I'm 67% charged with 275 kilometers remaining, and that's because I don't have the climate on. But everything that you add on, so I've got the climate going right now, but everything that you add on is going to potentially take away from your range. So if you've got the stereo going, if you've got your heated ventilated seats going, things like that, you'll notice that the range is going to drop versus when you're off. This is the max range in ideal conditions, as long as you're not gunning it as you drive. But the, the screen here is amazing. Like there are so many amazing features that this thing has. So, I mean, it's got factory navigation standard inside of it. The factory nav is incredibly responsive. You can zoom in and out using the little scroll wheel as well if you want, which is neat. But you've also got Android Auto and Apple CarPlay support inside of this. But the only downside is that Android Auto, Apple CarPlay are done using a wired connection. That's one thing that I would like to see changed. It should be wireless because there's also a wireless charge pad. But here and or there, the screen, like I said, is great. The GV70 has a series of different audio choices that are available as well. So if we go into media, You've got the option for FM, AM, Sirius XM, Sounds of Nature. Those are your basics. There's Bluetooth audio, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay for streaming, and then there's USB music and USB video. So if you've got a USB stick with MP3s on it and video, all you're going to do, plug yourself in down the center stack there. And before I played the video, I was so frustrated. So I went through and I use MP4 typically when I'm exporting the videos that I upload to YouTube, but MP4s wouldn't play on this. And it's technically on the supported list. Like there are very few types of video files that'll actually play back. AVI is supposed to be a supported format. Try that, didn't work. WMV, not gonna play back. I was able to get MPEG2 to actually work. So for video that is available. But I'll have all of the different formats popping up on screen here. But you've got USB video. Watch this. Can you figure out if it makes sense to look at the forward edge or the more luxurious and obvious? Let's go for it. Starting off underneath the hood of these crossovers, they both have the same. You'll find either a two liter turbo or a two point six. So I love the fact that you've got video playback available <laughs> inside of this thing. I'm actually curious now. So the car is currently in park. So if I go to drive, <laughs> it does happen. Okay. I kind of figured that that was going to be the case. So you can't actually watch video while you're driving. So if you're parked, you're waiting for things to maybe charge up or you're just kicking back for a bit. You can actually watch video right through the screen here. But the downside for the video is that it's strictly over USB. So what you'd have to do is take your video files and convert it to very small number of formats in order to actually be able to play it. But USB video playback is available here. Then there's also USB music available and you've got so many options, but the audio inside of this thing is really, really good. Like let's just choose one of these random songs. This one actually works well to kind of show off treble bass and things like that. But this is the upgraded 15 speaker audio system. So you can see the speakers all throughout the door there. Inside of the GV70, there are a series of different speaker options that are available. But because I'm in the Prestige Electric GV70, 15 speaker system is going to be the option. And the sound is really good. So this is just coming out of the microphone. There's no post-processing done whatsoever. But let's listen to this. Just a little scroll wheel. 
Wake up every morning, make a good impression on your boss. Don't do anything that I wouldn't do. And when you make your money, what else you succeed? And then invest all of my time into that and proceed. I need whatever the hell can make me happy. And I don't think you have a clue what could that be. They tell me that I'm never gonna make it. They want me to do something that can make sense. They hate me and I keep dreaming I'll be famous. <laughs> the audio inside of this thing is so, so good. So if you're the type of person where you can really appreciate good audio, the speaker system, the Lexicon audio system inside of the Genesis GV70 is incredible. But like I said, the, uh, the infotainment system inside of this thing is great. I just love that you can control this whole system using the little rocker knob here. It's really cool. Seats, that different seat controls that are available as well. You can adjust out. And then that little button along the driver's seat also turns on your little ergo motion seat. So massage chair seat with three individual settings available there as well. I said really solid. But if you want to walk through, like you actually want to know how to use the infotainment system, like sort of the steering wheel, those walkthrough videos are down in the description. You're obviously going to be push button start. And then you've got your climate control settings. But these, it's kind of neat. So you've got buttons on the outside here. So it's like one big button along the outside and this side as well. But this part of the screen is more like a haptic feedback type of a system instead. So you press the button there and you get a little bit of a press on your finger. It is really, really neat the way that it works. Obviously dual zone climate control inside of it. And then there's some hot button presses to get to different options so like map, there's a custom button. You can get to your radio if you want to, media, different setup options. Then you've got a few different options in order to adjust your volume. So you can go up and down this way or along the steering wheel there as well. A series of other buttons down here. So the beeping that you get as you get closer to obstacles forward or backwards, you can toggle that off. Then there are a series of selectable modes. So either drive modes or terrain modes, which take a look at that. You can even create your own custom mode, but it changes up the dynamic look of the cluster screen here as well. And at, ooh, I just noticed that. As you go through different modes, it even tells you what the difference is going to be for your range. I didn't even notice that before. That's really cool. So yeah, that makes sense. Obviously, if you're in the eco mode, you're going to get the best possible range. Sport mode, not so much. So yeah, if you're, eco if you're economically conscious, you're going to definitely want them in the eco mode. And then you've got a series of selectable terrain modes as well. And that's going to play with things like traction control, stability control, etc. There's also a button for a 360 camera button like this. So you've got this great looking top down view. There's a basic back view, a top down view larger, your side view as well. So if you're getting in and out of tight spaces, and then on top of that, there's this really, really cool view, which I mean, I love this. So let's go into reverse with that view going. So even as you're moving the vehicle, you're driving, whatever the case may be, it, I love it. I love the way that, uh, that Genesis has designed this system. And then just some basics for your guidance lines and things like that. There are a few different rockers here. So you've got a volume rocker. There's also a neat little tuning rocker. So let's go to our radio for a second. Oh, perfect. There we go. Go between our different uh, sources there. And then you've got this little rocker in order to be able to fine tune as well, which is kind of nice. So you can tune that way if you want to, but honestly, your best bet, 94.9 FM. Just tuning that way instead. Super straightforward. And then there's a basic back button as well. So if you're the type of person where you want to use the little dial in order to be able to control the screen, you can do that. There's a button there to go back home, to go to the main screen, home to go to this calming screen instead. There's a basic back button, or you can dive into an additional menu setting there as well. But I mean, yeah, I love it. It's good. There's an auto hold setting. So if you're in drive and you come to a complete stop, you can take your foot off the brake and the car is not going to move. Realistically, even if you're in the one pedal drive as well, or the I pedal, take your foot off the brake when you come to a complete stop, you're not rolling anyways. The armrest inside of this thing is non-lockable, but it's got a good amount of storage space with a 12 volt power point in there. Got a little dash cam set up as well. So that's where you're going in order to plug yourself in. There's a tiny little removable tray. The glove box is fully lockable on top of that. Good amount of space in there yeah, the overall style but the view beautiful love it all around up overhead so there's an auto dimming rear view mirror 
with the option of programming in a garage door opener. So if you've got one at home, you're good to go. This, I mean, the style is great, but it's actually a little sunglasses holder. There's also a few other buttons as well to call for roadside assistance, SOS. There's interior light controls. And then this thing also has a roof, but you can do a few different things. So if you do like a big press and hold, it's going to fully open the roof. But if you just do a light one, it's just going to open the shade up. But I mean, I love that tinted glass along the top. Beautiful. Then you've got a few options. So you can push in in order to create a little vent. And then you can also fully open this thing. But I mean, look at that. One button press opens it up the full way. But I mean, you got a little bug guard there just in case. But having an EV where you could fully open the roof up, I think is amazing. And then button press there to close everything together. Look at that. Love it. And then you've got a little suede headliner here as well. So, I mean, obviously it's collecting a little bit of dirt. So it is a little bit tricky to, clean, uh, to keep suede clean. But still, like I said, the overall style here love it there are a few different color interiors that are available but i mean this color combo i think genesis has done an amazing job i probably just wouldn't go for this like unfortunately no other options but the suede headliner like i'd probably go cloth but i mean that still looks really sharp at the same time ah that's good nice the visor has a little ticket receipt holder and you've also got the vanity mirror perfect position in order for the light to come on and this thing extends out to block all of the sun that might be hitting your face. And then your holy crap handles along the driver passenger side there as well. But like I said, this is great overall. And I've got the driver seat set up for myself being six feet tall. So the way that I would traditionally drive, I've got a great amount of foot space, great amount of knee space and sitting fully upright. I've got an inch and a half roughly of head space, which is pretty solid. But one nice thing about the Genesis lineups, so the GV70, is the second row, you've got a little lever along the side. So you can pull that in order to create a little bit of a recline in the seat. Comfortable. The second row of this thing is really, really nice. Could probably go for a little nap right now. You've got the quilted Napa leather inside of this thing too. <sighs> so good. So if you're like 6'4", six, 6'5", six, or even shorter and just wanting a nice recline and relax definitely recline it it's really good the cup holders inside of this thing are built right into the seat there which is useful and then even along the doors driver passenger side there are also some cup holders bottle holders whatever the case may be you've got a little net along both the driver passenger side and then down below so see there there's also i guess it'd be tri-zone climate so you've got a different tri uh, setting for your driver seat passenger seat and then for people in the back row. So you can adjust the fan speed back here, adjust the climate. You do want it going to your face, your feet, turn it off. And then there's also the option for heated second row seats, not ventilated, just heated. And it's strictly for the outboard. So this middle seat is never going to be heated just for the people that are on the outboard seats there. But I mean, still really comfy. Then you've also got a few USB power points down there as well. Then right in the seat. Strictly gonna be on the passenger side, but you've got these buttons there as well. So if you want to, you can move the seat forwards, backwards on top of that, where I can find that coming into play or being useful. If you wanted to play a prank on your spouse that was sitting in the seat or people in the back seat wanted to play with a person who's sitting in that seat. It's kind of useful at the same time though. It's good. Yeah, the overall style here, I think is great up overhead. There's a little handle, a hook, and a light. And that's the same on the driver and on the passenger side. And then one other thing, you can see those hooks there for some shade. So you've got a sleeping kid, don't wanna be bothered by the light. You've got that available. But yeah, the style here. I love what Genesis has done with this. This is good. You've got your basic window controls there. Unlock lock buttons for the second row doors. And just an overall comfortable seat, comfortable experience. I like this. This is good. 
but this is the electrified version. So let's take it out for a spin and have a little bit of fun. The electric version of the Genesis GV70 has 429 horsepower and 516 pound-feet of torque and You feel it, for sure. This is amazing. And one great thing is that the cabin inside of this thing is incredibly quiet at the same time. Like, incredibly quiet. Even going highway speeds right now, so I'm on a 100 kilometer an hour road, there isn't really much audible road noise. So any noise that you're hearing, it's coming right out of the microphone right now. Another boost, this is zero to 60 kilometers an hour. <laughs> I'm at 60. <laughs> this is so damn good. Uh, Genesis, <laughs> nicely done. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> that's a lot of fun, I love it. But there's one glaring downside to using the boost mode. When you do use it, you are gonna chew through your battery very rapidly. Like I just did a quick little boost right there and I went from 222 kilometers available down to 215 available, just for a little bit of fun. So, you know what? That's something that I'm definitely willing to sacrifice because it is obviously a lot of fun, but that's something to take into consideration as well is that if you are using the boost mode or if you're driving the EV a little bit harder than you normally would or something closer to a traditional internal combustion engine, you are going to use a little bit more power in comparison. Then I'm gonna do a little slalom test, so a little left and right and see how she goes. I mean, considering right now I drop down, I'm actually in the eco mode. I would say that that's pretty respectable at the same time too. I just can't get over that boost mode. The fun thing about boost mode, it reminds me of a movie with Mr. Bean, and it actually was like the first Mr. Bean movie. There was one scene where he was at an indoor kind of like motion roller coaster, and he, the first time he went on the ride, it was brutal. He just like wasn't having fun whatsoever. So we ended up sneaking into the back room, and while he was back there, he cranked up all the settings to their maximum capability. And I just remember he was sitting, I can't remember the name of the other actor, but who he was sitting next to, Rowan Atkinson kind of looked at him and he goes, brace yourself. And like just floors in, it just like goes nuts and the people are flying everywhere, kids are crying. And honestly, that's how this boost mode kind of makes me feel. Like it is amazing, amazing, amazing. And that was a look at the Genesis GV70. You can find all of the build details and links off to Genesis Canada and USA down in the description of this video, along with all the tech walkthrough videos like on the steering wheel cluster, the smart cruise control, and everything in between. But if you found this video useful, share it with someone if you think they might find it helpful. And until I see you next time, take care.